But one thing I know is this, is that no matter what I try to do to get my life to some form of normality, it doesn't work. I don't know if you've found that, but any time you're trying to do it. And so I kind of figured, God, what are you trying to tell me? What are, you tr- what are you doing in this? If, there's no, if I'm trying this and it's not working, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the problem. And so I began to look at a few things. And as you know, we've declared a 21-day a fast, but I've just extended it while I was away to 22 days because I figured take 22 for 22. Remember in the old days when we used to have storm in heaven in 97 and all those amazing things that didn't change the world at all, come alive in 95 and all that stuff, you know. But I looked at it and I was studying it and doing it with a few other people that were just chucking in thoughts and all that sort of stuff. And one of them sent this thing through, what do you think of take 22 for 22? And I thought, you know what? It's been a long time since we've done a cliche thing. Let's have one. So folks, we're taking 22 days of prayer and fasting for 22, 2022. How about that? So if you want to join me in this, I'm going to preach this morning about where God, I believe, is leading us and all that sort of stuff in this time. And the scripture that I know that, that I felt that God led me to that morning, you, you were here if you were here before Christmas, I talked about in Second Chronicles, it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, we will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear. Now he's talking to his people if they will turn from their wicked ways. So that means the people of God were being naughty. I don't know what it was, but this is a story after their repentance. This is not God telling them what they had to do. He's telling them how to maintain what's been happening. So if you want to continue walking in my blessing, he's saying, humble yourself. Humble yourself. See, I've heard a lot of people preach about revival out of this thing. If my people will humble myself, I'll heal their land. Revival will come. That's not what Jesus God is saying here. God is saying, if you want to maintain walking under my reign, walking under my blessing, you got to humble yourself. Be the one that says, God, I can't do this. God, I can't do this. Humble yourself. What's the point of wearing masks? It's so stupid. Just humble yourself. I'll guarantee you, if you it's a, it can be a pride thing. All this stuff that's going on right now, you know what it's done to me? It's showing me my pride. It's showing me where, you know what? At the end of the day, I can't change this world, but God can. And he says to me, Darren, if you will just humble yourself, seek me, turn from your wicked ways, turn from them. What are they? I know, I know some stuff in me that I need to just, God, take it. You know, you've all got it. When you do it, you go, I'm sorry, God, please help me. Unless you're really, really good. Unless you've got it down pat and you're just walking around going, man, I'm better than everybody. Here's it. Pride. James 4, 6, God resists the proud. That's why I'm so excited that I can't get proud because he says he'll resist them and he'll humble them. So I can't be in any problem here. If I keep walking with God and saying, God, and I, you know, like I'm getting out there and doing all this stuff, and man, this is awesome. Look at what we're doing. Look what you, our church, is doing, folks. We're doing amazing stuff in the kingdom. This is amazing. And everybody, oh, you, our church, they're amazing. They're in Air, Burdick, and they're across Charters Town, Ingham, Cairns, Northern. They're, they're taking North Queensland by storm. God will humble us. Don't worry. You can't get too proud if you will humble yourself pray, turn from your wicked ways, you'll be fine. So we want to argue with God and go, well, God, you know, what what is it that, so this scripture that's been on my mind, you know, why do I want to do this? Why do I want to bring, the whole INC movement is actually doing, they call it 21 days of uh, fresh air, um, which I think is great that they've done it for every, for years that I, I can remember. But I think this time, There's just something about us coming into a place of just humility and saying, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. And when you ask me, I'm I'm pretty scared to actually do something. And I need your strength because it's only you that's going to change the lives that I work with, that I live with. So I'm saying basically, here I am. 
I'm aware of your presence. I'm aware of you. I don't know if you are aware this morning, but God's presence was he is here. I sense it. I feel it. I know he's here. Even when I can't, I know he's here. It's that even when I don't understand what's going on, I'm aware. Even when I need you to lead me, I need you to guide and direct my life right now. See, if you're trying to guide and direct your own life, that's pride. I could do this. I've studied. I've got enough knowledge in my head. He's saying, no, humble yourself and just go with me. I've got some friends who are just the most knowledgeable people. They may, I feel like an idiot when I'm sitting in their presence and having conversations, but we're really close friends. The reason is because they're smarter, and I like look hanging around them because people must think I'm smart. <laughs> but they're amazing friends, and they've got amazing minds that think just incredibly. Yet one of the things that stands out amongst a lot of them is their humility. If you were in this room, you would never know who they were. You would know the, co- the background that they've got because of the way they deal with who they are and knowing that God is the one that is their source. It's all to say this, that if we humble, and, humble ourselves, that I must humble myself and submit myself to you and your ways. Do you think for a moment, now if you're wearing or not wearing a mask, it doesn't matter, but do you think that for a moment, did you think for a moment that this little piece of paper can test our hearts so much? can test our hearts so much. Who'd have thought when we were going on about burkas? Who'd have thought? Must be a pain in the butt to be a bank robber right now. (laughs) Nobody has an idea whether or not you're actually there to hold them up. And then they'll ask for their COVID vaccination. You can't rob this bank, you're not vaccinated. Must be horrible. But you see, we, we don't look at things like this as that, God, what are you trying to show me? I don't know what it is. I don't know. You know. Look, honestly, it doesn't bug me. I just had a holiday with a half vaccinated family and a half unvaccinated family. The conversation was to the point robust, it made Christmas amazing. So I started putting face masks on the hams and all that sort of stuff. (laughs) But the thing is this, folks, is that what it did was that we were able to sit and just discuss with each other why we felt the way we felt. You know what came out the most was fear. The fear of, of being controlled, the fear of all these sorts of things. And I said, at the end of the day, one of the things that I just keep coming back to is that I trust God. I can't not trust him, especially in these days. And I'm inviting you as a church and an individual to join us in a time of prayer. We're doing one night a week corporately and the rest we've got um, devotionals for you to do every day, seven days a week over the 22 days. You can do it at home, you can do it with friends, you can do it in your home group, you can do it wherever you want to. But we're inviting you to come into a place of saying, God, I want to humble myself before you, to invite you to join us in prayer and join us on Monday nights at 7 o'clock. We're going to be here from 7 till, I don't know, I can't give you an end time because I just feel like, God, it's one night out of a week. It's one night, we're just asking. It might go till 7.30. It might go till 9. I'm just hoping that people will humble themselves and give up their moment of that show that you've been waiting or that meal time or just that thing that, you know, like I've already said what I'm doing for fasting. I'm fasting all meals except one. I haven't chosen which one. I'm thinking I'm going with breakfast. I'll eat breakfast. I'm already lining up. I'm going to have roast chicken, steak. <laughs> I've got to kick my day along because I, I don't know about you, but I find it hard to work and fast. In the, Jesus, did you see what Jesus did? What did he do when he fasted? Where'd he go? To the bush. What was around him? Nothing. We don't have that at this point. If you want to go away and fast, take your 21 days, don't eat. Go, but go. Get out. Because you're out of this town. Because you will find it difficult. I'll guarantee it. 
But the issue is this, is that whether you find it difficult or not, choose a thing. You might want to, cho- you might want to miss your morning teas and afternoon teas. You might want to miss breakfast. You might, whatever you do, you might want to do the full 21 days. I don't mind what you do, but just do it wisely. And do it where led by God. I've prayed, I've sought the Lord, and I feel that this is what he's asked me to do. To miss the meals and eat one. He hasn't told me which one. I wish he would do that. He might have, I might wake up tomorrow morning and there's manna on the lawn. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I invite you. I don't know what your 22 is looking, 2022 is looking like. But if it looks anything like mine, it hasn't been a great start. But either was 21. 20 was amazing. We all thought 20 was going to be, the, the, that was it. Weren't we excited about 2020? That didn't last long. I kind of think God's trying to get our attention for something. So fasting, a call to prayer and fasting. The scripture is God speaking to Solomon. He's talking to him. He's saying, come on, if you want to maintain my presence like you've got it here, just walk like this. Walk in this way. Humble yourselves. Pray. Humility is the position of our heart that prepares us for God to do what he wants to do. This is not a fast to let prophetic words flow and utter love by the dozens. This is a fast that if you want prophetic words for the season, get on the internet. There is billions of them telling you what God's going to do in 2022. That reminds There's another one, what God's going to do in 2022. There is hundreds of them. There's thousands of them. I've got one on my, my phone right now that somebody sent me the other day and I just resonated in my spirit. Something about it just went, this, we're, I think we're on track, God. And I wasn't looking for one because I, haven't, I don't know any of them that are out there. I just know what happens on New Year's Eve in the church world. And if you, <laughs> who's seen them? Who's seen some prophets have prophetic words? There, there you go. They're everywhere. You can find them. But the thing is this, is that when I'm not looking for something and all of a sudden you meet somebody at somebody's barbecue party who you've got no idea who they are and all of a sudden they go, I don't know if you've seen this prophetic word from this person, but here's a really cool word. We weren't even talking about prophetic words. And I read it and I went, oh, that's very interesting. You know what it's talked about? Humility. God showed me right there while we were sitting in the backyard looking at my mate's outdoor kitchen barbecue that I was extremely jealous of, sitting there, talking away. He goes, oh, by the way, I don't know if you've seen this, this bloke who I've never met. He goes, read this. I have it on my phone. Why? Because I want God to do what he wants to do in us and through us. Humility is being subdued under God, dependent on Him. Not your knowledge of the Bible, not your knowledge of end times, but just being dependent on Him. God, I depend on you to get me through today. I work in an office where people are scared, they are afraid, they don't understand why I'm not. Am I afraid? Of course I am. I look at things and I go, oh, gee. When I was on holidays, we didn't go to one single shopping center. Saved me a lot of money. (laughs) We didn't go anywhere because when we went down, we were in, Janine and I got put into lockdown for five days. Why five days? My son was in the same thing. He got 24 hours and he was told what he could do. He said, you're free. You can go. He said, Dad, you should be right. But nobody would want us to come. They all said, oh, you haven't got a positive test back yet. So Janine and I spent Christmas Day driving around Caloundra. We had fresh ham on fresh bread rolls. It was amazing, sitting at the Red Cliff Peninsula, looking out over the ocean. It was amazing. Our Christmas Day, we were driving back home, and I said, you know something? As much as we were upset about not being able to be with our family, I couldn't see my mum. I was arranging to have Christmas breakfast with mum and all that sort of stuff. We tested on the 24th and didn't get told that we were non covid until the 29th. So we couldn't do anything going in. My daughter said, Dad, look, just come to our place. You obviously haven't got it, but you're going to have to sit in the corner. So we sat under the, we sat under the stairs with masks on and just sat. And I get it. I wasn't 
like I wasn't cranky at her or anything like that. I was just cranky at the situation. And Janine kept looking at me. She goes, honey, there's a reason for this. I said, I know the reason. You're not able to go to the shops and therefore I have saved a fortune. <laughs> and she goes, well, if that's what you're telling yourself, then keep it. I said, oh, don't you worry. There's antique stores we can't go to, everything like that. Uh, and so, but for five days we sat there and we rang. We rang the company and said, what's happening to our thing? You know what happened? As I ring, you get put on, you know, it rings and rings and rings, then you get put on the system. Guess what? They said, we can no longer process your call and hung up on me. Five times. I was, to to say the least, the joy of the Lord was not protruding out of my life. And Janine was saying to me, honey, let's just enjoy each other. Why? I see you all the time. But we did, sitting in the corner. Lissy went and got two rockers that we, two old, we look like grandma and grandpa sitting in the corner. We are. That's true. Struggling with the concept of humility, James 4, 6, is like I said before, it helps me understand that if I'm going to get proud in my humility, God will fix it. James 4, 6 says that he resists the proud. So if I get proud in my humility, guess what he's going to do? He's going to get it. So don't worry about being too proud, prideful. Just go about being humble and saying, God, teach me how to walk in your ways. Paul's humility was his boasting in his weakness. That God, you know, like what Emily said this morning, you know, that's a weakness in Emily. But we've all got it. It might not be in the form of PTSD, but we've got a weakness where we have to depend upon the Lord. We have to. There is an area in every one of your lives that God is nailing right now. And as we come as a church over the next 22 days, so it's tomorrow, the 10th, till the 31st of January, the last day, which is a Monday. So every Monday at 7 p.m., we will be here praying. We've got little prayer state. I'm excited about what we're doing. It's not just like a holy, it's, what do you call it? Remember the old ones? Yeah, 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 like that. And you walk out sore. But it was a great prayer meeting. But this one, we're actually going to deal with some things. So if you come, it's going to be great. And we're going to help you. We've got prayer stations. We've got places around the room in here because it's going to be air conditioned. There's no way in the world we're going to be preaching, doing it outside. Let's not get too uncomfortable. We're fasting as it is. But, you know, you know, and as Emily said, if it's your TV, your magazines, whatever it is that you do that also do it on top of the food. If it's a Netflix show that is that just downloaded the whole series yesterday and you were thinking to yourself, work doesn't really kick back in in the next month, oh, everything sort of slowed down, I'm going to give myself to it. Maybe God just says, don't. But, but it's the Mandalorian God. It's the Boba Fett book. I don't know. That's mine. That's the one I have to lay aside. But you see, we, 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 we have got these things that God is challenging us with. What is it that he wants you to do? Maybe it's simply trusting him, that you are not good at trusting him right now. And you, you, he's going, will you do this with me? Will you watch me? Do what I do? Watch me set you free. Because I think on the 31st, when we pray that night, I am so excited. I'm already excited about that one because I think the journey that we're on, and I know the, 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 this thing, devotional, that's a down, there's a heap of these down the back. If we run out, let the ladies know. We'll get more copies. We can send them to you electronically. We'll get better at this when it gets to be electronic. But our heart attitude, James 4, 6, God gives grace to the humble. 4, 10, humble yourselves before the Lord. He will lift, and he will lift you up. He will lift you up in this time. Face him. Face him. God, I'm really struggling with this. If you are really struggling with the COVID situation right now, and trust me, there are Christians all over the world struggling with this. I have a family full of them that are just not my immediate family, but my, my, my extended family and down south are just the conversation and you know, the, the angst towards those of us that, are, that, that have got this opinion and, and we think God has got this. He's in control. He's in charge. God has not lost control of the world, folks. This is all part of it. 
whatever it looks like. And if you are of the ilk that this is the second coming and all that sort of stuff, then hold fast to that belief. But don't run people down that don't believe the same thing. If you're of the ilk right now that I've got to just, you know what, this is just, this is just wrong and it's stupid, you're fine to have that opinion. But listen to those that don't think that way. And the ones that don't think that way, listen to those that think it's stupid. Listen to each other. Hear each other's pain. <clears throat> I know what it's like to be separated for five days from my family over Christmas when I was planning to be there. But man, there was people in Victoria that lost loved ones. Okay, I suffered for five days and I was made to sit in a corner with a mask on. Whoop-de-doo. There's friends at the border, the people at the border that just couldn't cross. The, the, the hospital was just there, but they weren't allowed in and they lost a loved one. What? Well, that's pain. And then we've got the, 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 what is it? the conspiracy theorists. I see now there's one called Florona which is a cross with the flu and the corona. That's perfect for men. The men, what are they going to call the man florona? You see, we've got, we've got so many things happening in the world right now, and, and it's just, it's never going to stop. But God is faithful. Humble yourself. Mark 9.35 says, Jesus sitting down, called the 12, and he said, anyone who wants to be first must be the last. John 3.30, he must become greater and I must become less. He's talking about himself. Jesus must become greater in me and I must become less. Mark 10.45, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Our character and our behavior. Ephesians 4.2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Bear with one another. Walk with one another. Walk with it. I love that they haven't made vaccinations a thing for the church. If you're not vaccinated, you're allowed in. If you are vaccinated, you're allowed in. Wow! Let us be a light to the world to show people. Who would have thought that vaccination or non-vaccination would have been a thing? We would have thought it would have been a race issue. And now it's all about vaccinations. Can't go into that shop. You can't do this. I went to the movies while I was away. Saw the new Spider-Man. Absolutely amazing. But the, the Amazing Spider-Man. That's a really cool pun, eh? But, uh, you know, we, we did this thing and we had to sign in. But that was the only place they asked me to look at my tick. Everywhere else. Nowhere else. Amazing. But does it matter? Well, who does and who doesn't? We just walk humbly before God and say, God, thank you for the life that I have. Come on, church. We are free. We are free. Come on, church, we are free. You're either, you're either bound up in, in angst and, and all this stuff that's going on in the world, or you're free in Christ. And that's why we shine, because we're free. This stuff doesn't ail me. I was talking to a friend this morning, just said, he's off Facebook now. And I'm going, since I've been off Facebook, I am happier than I've ever been. Who would have thought getting off the old FB would have changed my life? Who'd have thought getting out of Instagram changed my life? Who'd have thunk something so simple? I don't hear what's going on really quickly anymore. If you've got a story to tell me, Em, guess what? You've got to ring me up and tell me. That's novel. Remember the old dial? You had to wait to, for the phone thing to come back. Triple zero was a real pain. It was right around. Did they not think about that? It should have been the shortest one. If you were in an emergency, imagine. You'd have to wait. Here's this thing. And, 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 and the, God is doing this amazing thing in the world. <coughs> and the church tends to keep looking at it negatively. But he wants us to look at it with life. Because if we humble ourselves under God, if we humble ourselves, God, I walk with you. I choose to be the person you've called me to be. And I walk humbly under your hand, no matter what's going on out there. You know, I've never got my head in the sand. I know that there's stuff. I know, but what ails me is the hurting and the broken. 
The people that are hurting in this season. We've got our own family. The Harrises are in COVID lockdown because their daughter came home with COVID. And Melissa, we've got to pray for them. Melissa is... Her, 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 Melissa Harris has got the symptoms of shakes and temperatures. That's one of our own. First person I actually know. Not a media report. But how did I find out? Shane rang me. He didn't post it on Facebook. He rang me and said, Noz, can you help? Just pray. I said, yeah, the whole family is in lockdown. As a sanguine, that would be a nightmare. It was. When I was in the motel room, it was like just being a caged lion. But the issue is this, folks, is what do we do? Now I'm thinking we need COVID packs. When you hear families locked down, just drop them off something. Drop it at the door, poke it up with a stick. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Throw it like a hand grenade. I don't, however you want to get it to them. But we do what we do and we can pray for people. Do you remember the old days when they used to pour oil on hankies? And give it to people. We don't do that anymore because we do it on the internet. But about put it on your mouth. Anoint it with oil. And they do then. <sighs> oh, what was that? Put garlic oil on it or something. But imagine the sky is the limit when we start to look at things today in the way God, if we will just humble ourselves and seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. A wicked way could simply just be, if you, just, if you go to a, a sin or anything like that, that's great. Maybe there's a sin issue that you, you're dealing with. But it could be a wicked way of just saying, see, that they had walked away from God. They said, we don't need you. We'll do it our way. And I think sometimes the church has had it down. I don't think going back to normal is going to be a thing for us. There's no normal to go back to anymore. And I don't know what that looks like. But I'm excited for the journey. Me thinks that small groups has got something to do with it. Me thinks that being in smaller groups is, is a powerful thing. You imagine little groups. This is how they did it in the Bible. There was little tiny groups all over. Meeting, praising God, honoring Him, living the life of Christians, going into the workplace, doing little and they'd come together. Imagine them all over North Queensland, through the city of Townsville, through just everywhere. I don't know what it's going to look like, folks, but whatever it looks like, let's humble ourselves over these next 22 days and say, God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on our land. How do I conduct myself in this time? Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to associate with the people of low position. Don't be conceited. Philippians 2, 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility, value others above yourself. So when you fast, remember that Christian fasting, our type of fasting, is not belittling of a good gift of food. Food is a gift that we've been given. But we're saying simply, God, I lay this aside so that I can be all that you need me to be. I put it aside to you. I love you, God. I need you more than food is what we're saying. That's why, why I'm doing what, why I've called it this way is to say, God, I love you. And I don't know what else to do. This is not me twisting your arm up behind your back and saying, see, I fasted for 22 for 22. Now you need to fix my family. Now you need to do this. No, that's not humility. Humility is coming to him and saying, God, no matter what, I need you. I need you more than I need life. So Matthew 16, 6, 6, 16 says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show themselves, that, show others that they're fasting. Imagine that. Don't come to church. And or we won't know because you've got a mask on, so it's all good. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Isaiah 58, 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you say, and you, um, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of our fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. So he's saying, they're saying in Isaiah, don't treat people like any differently. They just let's go about doing our business. And the promises of this is James 1, 9 to 10. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. We take pride in what we're doing, but we're saying, God, with our humility. I love that the Bible feels so contradictory. 
But it says, take pride in what you're doing. We are doing this because we're with the Father, but walk humbly before him. We're doing this, God, because we want to walk in your ways and your purpose. Psalm 25, 9, he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Teaches them his way. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. He, Proverbs 3.34, he, he mocks proud mockers but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. And Luke 14.11 says, For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So we often say, God, when is it going to break through? When are we going to see this? God says, just humble yourself. I'll look after the rest. Just be humble and walk with him. And so today, while we're walking this journey, over these next 22 days, it's actually, we work, we've been walking it, we're just focusing ourselves on it. I would encourage you, come on Monday nights, 7 o'clock, we're announcing it in all the other locations, they're doing different things and all that sort of stuff because they've got to work with their people. But for us here in Townsville, we're doing Monday nights from the 10th, which is tomorrow, to the 31st, which is the last Monday of this month. Where we go from there, let's just do the journey now. Let's do four weeks where we concentrate studying the Word. And if you've got your own study on fasting and praying, I don't mind at all. This is just something to help people, to, to, to bring understanding. Actually, the first week is actually unpacking 2 Corinthians 4.10. It's unpacking... Uh, 7.14, sorry. That was another scripture I had. But 2 Corinthians 7.14, unpacking the whole thing of what it means to walk humbly and all that sort of thing. And each day focuses on a different portion of that, that passage, looking at other scriptures and helping you unpack it. Um, hopefully, as we get further into the month, we'll get more electronic versions for people who'd rather have it electronic, but at the moment, we've only got hard copies. Um, they're down the back. If you want them, grab them. If they've run out, let the girls know and we'll get more copies for you. But come tomorrow night. Be part of what we're doing. Be part of what God is doing in our nation. Um, INC across the country is, is doing a similar thing. I don't know what each location is doing, but I know what we're doing. I know what God has called us to do. I feel confident in this. Um, tell your friends, tell your enemies. Anybody's welcome. You don't have to be a church member to come. But just remember, this is a time of us seeking God, not for people to for be able to say, well, this is what, uh, at the end, we'll have maybe some times of what God's showing you of each night, what God's showing you, what has he done. If you want to be open, you, do, you can be. If you don't want to say it, you don't have to. It's okay. What we want is for people to come and pray. Because he tells us, if my people will humble themselves and pray, will seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will hear their cry. And I will heal their land. And I don't know if you see it, but we, our land needs healing. There are so many broken, hurting people. The mental health issues at the moment in our nation have just... You know, I think I've talked to Di on Lifeline, and they have a specific... I believe now Lifeline and a few other agencies have got a specific helpline for Victorians in COVID because of the mental health issues that have happened. That's a... That is sad, isn't it? We have a housing crisis in our state at the moment because Southerners are moving here. Um, we are at a, a huge, huge, a huge problem with people looking for houses to live in, to rent even. I know we've got staff that are, have just... Have you found a house yet, Donna? Still haven't found a house. How long has that been? Six months. And you're on a million dollars a year. That's amazing. Six months for, that, for this single woman and her son to find a place. Six months. There's a family at the moment, I don't know if you've seen, there's a family living, out at, um, living in a tent. They've got a massive tent. And uh, I've been seeking the Lord on it. Is there something that we can do here with um, um, containers or shipping or even if they've got their own caravan but the problem we've got is toilets and showers so we need to actually look at those facilities and but it's a huge crisis because we've also had a platoon of troops move into Townsville um, so they've taken over the housing and that's for another reason that there's a whole new world of gamut of defense and everything for the northern pacific and all that southern pacific and all that stuff so 
There's a lot of things going on. So I don't know about you, but I need to walk humbly before God, rejoice in Him and go, God, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to walk humbly before you. Show me. Teach me your ways. Because I need you. Amen? Who's excited? Good. I'm excited. I can't wait for tomorrow night. I'm going to meet you here at 7 o'clock. What it looks like, I don't know. I'm just excited about praying. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've had some, some fun putting together a, a strategy for it. Um, and if you have ideas from it, let me know. Tomorrow night you come and go, oh, what about this? We could do that. Just let me know. We might not do them, but let me know what you think. And um, I'm happy to accommodate and look at what, you know, if we can do things smarter or better. But uh, I would love to have had more time to talk about this a lot more and introduce it to you a lot more. But anyway, tomorrow, start your fasting. Who's got in your mind what you want to fast? Okay, good. Those of you who haven't, give it some thought today. I don't care, honestly, I don't care what it is you fast, whether you miss a breakfast, a lunch, a morning tea, an afternoon tea, you can just miss one of them. Just choose something. But when you do it, just say, Lord, this is for you. Help me walk humbly before you. Let me be the person that you've called me to be. I want to shine in these days. I don't want to shrink. You know, like I, I was so proud of Emily this morning, just sharing her heart today. That's hard to tell so that a church of faith-believing, charismatic, spirit-filled people, I suffer with PTSD. I've been diagnosed with this. But that doesn't weaken her, that strengthens her. And it strengthens her in my sight because I go, wow, look at what she does to be the person she is. Look at what these people fight. Did Jesus take it on the cross? Yes, he did. She knows that. But she's got to wake up tomorrow morning believing that when she still feels what she feels, God's still got her. You all face these things. And yet when somebody else faces, we go, well, what's wrong with them? Because they're the same as you. They're exactly the same. They all face it. We've been praying. Remember Belinda and the Newman family? We're praying for their little boy that got meningitis, I think it was. He's just started walking. She sent me a photo last night of him walking with a walker. Little five-year-old now walking. Ray and Belinda Newman from Innisfail. She said to me last night, she just, this is all text. I get these texts that take up my whole phone. Like they go, oh, they just go on. I send them through to the prayer team. I don't know how they decipher them, but they're just amazing. And she sent this through and she said, this has been one of the hardest five years of my life. It's because this little boy, we, I don't know, we prayed for him. He nearly died when he was born. They had their first son that was born. He nearly died. But they've had a pretty rough trot with their kids. And here's this one now, just got meningitis Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Flew him to Brisbane, flew him here, sorry, to Townsville. And uh, last night she sent me this message. She said, you know, the one thing I know, she said, is that as hard as it is in the days when I feel like crying and that God's not around, is the days that I feel that God is around. She said, he's been so faithful and so true and so just. And I read her things and it inspires me. Because if anybody's got a reason to complain at the moment, it's them. If anyone. So folks today. I don't know where your walk is with God and I don't know how you're feeling about the situation of the world. I do know because most of you have talked to me. But I don't know where you're at with it in yourself. I don't know where you see God in this. But he is in it right now. He is in this problem this world is facing and he's standing there going, will you humble yourself? He's saying it to the broken. Will you just humble yourself? But how can they do it if we won't? How can the lost come to God if we won't even humble ourselves and go, God, I need you? How can this happen? And it's simply this. So I praise God for my brethren all over the world that are humbling themselves and saying, God, you're doing something. Show me. Let's join them. Let's join the one in India and Afghanistan and Russia and America. Let's join these ones. England, Germany, Europe. Let's join them together over the next 22 days, 22 for 22. It's not the vision one this year. What was it? 20, 2020 vision. This year it's 22 days for 22 
Father, I thank you for this amazing bunch of people. Lord, I know you're looking at them right now and you're just looking at them going, I just want to give you the biggest hug and say, come on, let's do this together. Lord, I pray for my family today, my church family, my brothers, my sisters, my, these ones sitting in this room, those that can't be with us today, I pray for them. That God, that in these next 22 days, as we set them aside for the rest of this year, I pray, Lord God, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would open doors to us like never seen before, doors that into your world, doors that reveal things about you that we've never, never seen before. But Lord, I ask most of all, that we would just walk with humility, with you and with each other. That, Father, that this house would shine, as the Word says, that they will know us by our love for one another. Lord, let us walk humbly together over these 22 days, laying aside all our thoughts and theories and doctrines and saying, God have your way. I know some stuff, but I don't know everything. So Lord, I'm humbling myself. So I pray for each one that is going to fast, that's going to pray and, and study your word. I pray for us, Lord, that those that are on the fence and thinking, oh, can I, can't I? God, help them. We stand with them today. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. We pray for all the locations across the region, the Burdekin and Charters and Townsville. We pray that, Lord, you would move in this region and touch the hearts of the lives of people that we know every day. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>